Hello, in this video we're going to talk about transcendental numbers. We want to see what they are and how do we show that in fact there are transcendental numbers. So first the definition. A real number is called algebraic if it is a root of a polynomial equation with integer coefficients. For example, a number like two-thirds is algebraic because you can create this equation and x is a root of this equation. x equals two-thirds. But of course, not all algebraic numbers are uh, rational. Something like x equals the square root of 2 is also algebraic because we can write down equation x squared minus 2 equals 0. We can create algebraic numbers that are more complicated. Something like root 5 plus 1 over 2, if you set that equal to x, then you can create an equation that root 5 plus 1 over 2 is a root of. So how do we do that? We're going to solve for root 5 and then we're going to square both sides so we get 4x squared minus 4x plus 1 equals 5. So there's an equation, polynomial equation with integer coefficients that x equals root 5 plus 1 over 2 is a root of. Now we want to look at the ones that are not algebraic. A transcendental number is a real number that is not algebraic. So there's no obvious reason that there is a transcendental number. So it's easy to see that something is a root of a an equation um, uh, most of the times, a lot of the times. But it's not easy to see that something is not a root of a, a, a an equation, a polynomial equation with integer coefficients. So how do we show that in fact there are numbers that are transcendental number? And in a future video, I'm going to actually give you some examples of those transcendental numbers. But at this point, we're going to just show that there are numbers that are not algebraic. Here is the way. We are going to show that in fact, uh, algebraic numbers are countable, real numbers are uncountable. That means not only there are transcendental numbers, but they are also uncountably many transcendental numbers. Okay, so this is very interesting. So now the first thing is to show that algebraic numbers are in fact countable. So algebraic numbers are countable. So let's say A is the set of all algebraic numbers. So A is the set of all algebraic numbers. So how do we distinguish uh, algebraic from uh, transcendental? They are distinguished by a polynomial. So we take a polynomial p of x equals a n x to the power of n all the way to a zero. All of these coefficients are rational. If something is a root of a polynomial of that form, then it is called algebraic. So based on that, we can break up A as the union of A1, A2, A3, and so on. Now what we know is that if we have a bunch of sets that are all countable, then the union would also be countable. So let's define AN. So AN is the set of all X in R that X is a root of some p of x um, equals 0 with degree of p equals n and all coefficients of p are integers. Okay, so if we show that a n is uh, countable, the union would also be countable. So that's the first thing we need to show. So here is the first theorem. If a1, a1, a2, etc. are countable, then so is their union. So is a1 union, a2 union, a3, etc. So how do we show that? So here is how we're going to show that. We're going to create a listing for the union. Let's say A1 is given by A11, A12. These are the elements of A1, A13, A14, etc. A2, the elements in A2 are listed as A21, A22, A23, A24, etc. And the elements in A3 are listed as A31, 
a32, a33, a34, etc. And I'm going to list elements of a4, and the rest are going to be similar a41, a42, a43, a44, etc. Okay, so I'm going to list the union. The way I'm going to list them is by looking at the indices. I start from the smallest indices. So this would be the first one. This would be the ones that the indices add up to 2. The two indices here add up to 3. Then I list these two. Then I list these three, the indices that add up to 3, uh, 4, the indices that add up to 5, and so on. So the union a1 union, a2 union, etc. This, the elements of that could be listed as a11, which is the, the ones that indices add up to 2. Then we have a12 and a21. Those are like, I guess, the next diagonal, the ones that add, the indices add up to 3. Then we have a31, a32, a22. I'm sorry, A13, A22, and A31. These are the next ones. And you just continue with that. So that way you can get all of the elements of the union. And that means A1 union, A2, etc. is in fact countable. Now, if there are some repetitions in this listing, you could just drop them. So that's the first thing. So the next thing is each AN is in fact countable. So we will have to show that the set of, uh, the set of uh, roots of polynomials of degree fixed, the fixed number n, is countable. So in order to do that, we'll first show that the set of polynomials of degree n is in fact countable. So first, the set of polynomials of degree n with integer coefficients is in fact countable. So if you look at all of the linear polynomials with integer coefficients, you get some countable set. Okay, so how do we prove that? So if you look at every polynomial of degree n, polynomial of degree n would look like this, a n x to the power of n. Then we have a n minus 1, x to the power of n minus 1, etc all the way to a1, x, and then a0. So we can break these up based on one of the coefficients. Let's say the coefficient a0. So we could say b0 is all of the polynomials that a0 is 0. So all of the polynomials pn of x that a0 is 0 b1 could be all of the polynomials that a0 is 1 and etc. Now in order to include the negative numbers I'm gonna also include the ones that are negative 1. So bk would be all of the polynomials that a0 is plus or minus k. Now if you look at every polynomial in bk so when we look at uh, a polynomial in BK, we get PN of X is equal to AN X to the N all the way to A1X plus K or minus K. Let me just put the plus minus right here. Now if you look at the initial part of the polynomial, this can be written as X times AN X to the power of N minus 1 all the way to A1 which is a polynomial of degree n minus 1. Let's call that p n minus 1 of x. We know that these are countable. So we know there are countably many p n minus 1 of x if we use induction. Therefore, b n is also countable. So I'm using induction here. And then when I take the union of these, thus the union of b k is countable. And this is exactly all the polynomials of degree n. So now the main theorem. Algebraic numbers is 
countable. This set of algebraic numbers is a countable set. If you look at all the polynomials of degree uh, degree n, they are countable, the ones that have integer coefficients. Each polynomial, so each polynomial has finitely many roots. And there are countable number of polynomials with um, integer coefficients. So we have countably many polynomials of integer coefficients, and each one of them is uh, has only finitely many roots. So again, again, because of the argument that we made earlier, countably union of countable sets is countable. So that tells us that algebraic numbers is in fact countable. Now we know that R is uncountable. So the theorem is R is uncountable. Okay, so this one you may have seen this one before. If not, here is the idea of why R is uncountable. Proof is by contradiction. So how do we show that it is uncountable? Assume it is countable. If it were countable, so you can create a listing of all real numbers. Now let's say the first real number is something point, I'm going to write down the decimal representation. Let's say it is C11, C12, C13, C14, etc. Just write down the decimal representation. The next one is something and then C21, C22, C23, C24, etc. And so on. So the next one would be, let me write down maybe one more. X3 would be something dot C31, C32, C33, C34, etc. Now we're going to create a real number that is none of these numbers. So we're going to choose a number that is different at this point, different than this one, different than this one, and so on. So we're going to create this one 0.A1, A2, A3, A4, etc. AN is equal to, let's just say 2 if C11 isn't 2, if CNN isn't 2, and 3 if it is 2. So I want to make sure that AN is not CNN. So if that is the case, then that means this number that I created cannot be XN for any N, which means this number R is not in the list. So this is called diagonalization argument, Cantor's diagonalization argument. Finally, there are uncountably many transcendental numbers. So why is the, that the case? Because if there were only countably many uh, transcendental, transcendental numbers, then if you look at t, if that, that was countable, we know that algebraic is also countable. So that would have to be countable. But this is all real numbers. We know that's uncountable. We know this one is countable. Therefore, since the union is uncountable, that would have to be uncountable because otherwise the union would be countable and real numbers cannot be countable. And that brings me to the end of this video. So if you like this video, feel free to subscribe to the channel and check out the rest of the videos on my channel. And I will see you in the next video.